All right, so then we come to the second requirement, which is this uh, old second balance for every winding of the transformer. Okay? So the rule says that the cycle by cycle average CCA, the cycle by cycle average value of the voltage across each of the windings should be zero. Okay? So this is very similar to the old second balance that we studied for an inductor, where we said that the, the average voltage across the inductor should be zero. Okay, it's the same thing, just that now we are talking about a transformer and uh, we are also saying that this should be satisfied for every winding. Okay. In fact, because of the equal volts per turn, we know that um, all the um, voltages in all the windings will have the same wave shape. So if you actually uh, ensure that one, any one of the windings satisfy the volt second balance, that their average is zero, then automatically all the other winding voltages will also have zero average. So you really need to just check um, one of the winding voltages as long as you know that your switching action does not violate this equal volts per turn condition. Okay. So if you look at the same four winding transformer, the volt second balance says that the V1 average, uh, recall that the bar on top uh, denotes cycle by cycle average. So the V1 average over a uh, over a switching period, um, as well as V2 average, V3 average, V4 average, they are all equal to zero, and that is a requirement for uh, steady state operation. Okay. Now, why is this a uh, requirement? So, just like in the case of an inductor, if you do, if if you have a DC average value for the voltage across the inductor or the transformer, then it results in a continuous increase in the current. In the case of inductor, it increases the inductor current. In the case of the transformer, it um, any average value in any of the, any average DC value uh, in the voltage of any winding would result in a continuous increase in the magnetizing current of the transformer until the transformer core actually saturates and it is no longer a transformer. Okay, okay let me illustrate this point uh, further. So here is the a plot of the winding voltage in any of the windings. Um, so this is 20 volts minus 20 volts. And uh, as you can see, uh, it has a positive and negative portion. And the positive area is exactly equal to the negative area, which means the average, uh, the cycle by cycle average of this winding voltage is zero. And that satisfies the old second balance. Okay. So if you actually look at the flex waveform, or uh, actually the flex density waveform, which is plotted here, the unit is Tesla. Um, so the flex or the flex density is really the integral of the applied voltage in any winding. Therefore, when the winding voltage is positive, the flex actually increases. When the voltage is zero, the flex does not become zero. It actually just remains flat, no change. And when the voltage is negative, that is when the flex actually decreases. Okay. And then remains zero when the voltage is zero, sorry, remains uh, flat, um, no change when the voltage is zero and increases and the voltage becomes positive again. Okay. So since this satisfies the volt second balance and since the flex density is uh, uh, does not exceed uh, the maximum allowable limit, which for a ferrite is around 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.3 is around the saturation flex density. Okay. So clearly this is a valid circuit okay, because it satisfies the volt second balance and the flex density is within limits. Okay. Uh, for, the, for the reason that it satisfies the volt second balance that is why the flex is within the re within the um, uh, the allowable limit now if you consider another case uh, say the same transformer but i'm applying only the positive portion of this voltage the negative is somehow uh, clipped okay? so in that case um, obviously it does not sa satisfy the uh, volt second balance the average of this is not zero it is some uh, finite uh, non-zero positive value and if you look at the flex density, when the voltage is positive, it rises. And um, when the voltage is zero, um, it just remains um, unchanged at this value till the voltage is uh, zero. And then again, I have a positive voltage. Now, because of that, uh, the flex density again rises. It does not have a chance to come down. It rises. Then the voltage is zero. It remains flat. And once again, I apply a positive voltage, resulting in an increase of the flex density. So the bottom line is, if you apply a positive, a net positive voltage, then the flex density keeps increasing forever. And uh, once it goes above 0.3, then um, the core completely saturates and it is no longer um, a, a transformer. 
So this situation is an invalid circuit. Uh, the reason why it is invalid is because it violates volt second balance for a transformer. Now, related to the volt second balance, uh, anytime you have a situation like this, so where you have a transformer, the uh, let's say the primary is connected to rest of the circuits, which may have voltage source, a switch, and so on. And on the secondary, uh, if you have a situation where there is a diode directly in parallel with the secondary, in fact, a diode in parallel in shunt with any winding is um, is a, is a similar situation. Okay? So if we if we encounter this situation, most likely this is not a valid circuit. Uh, why is why is why, why is it so? Okay. Uh, the reason is we want the average voltage across the uh, transformer to be zero. Okay. Um, so if you have a diode, it means that, um, again, if we define my voltage to be, say, positive this end and negative this end here. So this voltage cannot be uh, negative because the diode will not allow a negative voltage, right? So, so for example, if this side begin, tends to become positive, the diode conducts making this voltage zero. Okay, so you can only have if you call this as say V secondary, and if there are some switching actions here, so you can only have a situation where V secondary is positive for some time, and it is only zero, not negative. Okay, so that would be the voltage waveform for V secondary versus time. And its average is somewhere here, V secondary average, and that obviously is not equal to zero, violates old second balance. Okay. Uh, the only way that this can be um, uh, valid is if you have V secondary, which is always zero, right? V secondary. But this is not a very useful situation. You want some switching, um, some some power transfer happening, only then it's a valid circuit. Okay. So most likely, if you have a situation like this where you have a diode directly in parallel with any of the windings, uh, usually it is not a valid circuit. Okay? I'm saying, being cautious in saying it is only usually because um, you know, if you are considering the um, um, like the winding resistances, the diode resistance, and so on, under for some special applications, you may be doing something like this. Okay, but in most cases, uh, especially if you're considering the ideal circuits for analysis then this situation will result in a valid, it will result in an invalid circuit. Okay, so let's uh, complete this video with an uh, example problem. Um, so here I have a switching power converter and uh, I want you to use the uh, volt second balance that we just now studied to um, get an expression, uh, a relationship between the output voltage VO and the input voltage V in and uh, in terms of the uh, duty ratio. Okay. Um, so if you recall, D is defined as uh, this T on interval. Uh, Q is actually the switching signal. When Q is one, it means the switch is on, and uh, Q equals zero, switch is off, and that's your off interval. Okay. So the ratio for of the T on over the entire period T is, which is from here till here. So I want a relationship between VO and V in in terms of this duty ratio D. Okay, and we know that we are going to use uh, volt second balance, so that's a clue. Uh, so to do that, you would uh, try to draw the uh, waveform, the voltage waveform across any of the windings. Uh, looks like I've done it for the uh, primary winding, okay, V primary. So what is the um, what is V primary? Okay, so when the switch is on, that is on this interval here. Uh, we are applying V in across the primary voltage. The switch directly connects the primary to the input source, that is V in, for this entire duration DTS. Okay. Now what happens when I turn off the switch? Okay. So actually we can do the analysis and show that the energy stored in the uh, in the transformer would actually forward bias the diode, force the diode to conduct. Okay. Now once the diode is conducting, that's all we care. Okay. So what is the voltage on the V primary? Okay. Now, the winding voltage is actually now decided in, during the off interval. It's actually decided by what happens on the secondary side because on the primary, the switch is open, so this winding is really floating. Okay. But on the secondary side, we, we have established that the diode is conducting. So what can you say about the secondary voltage? If you know that, then you can use the turns ratio to get what the primary voltage is. Okay. So let me define V secondary uh, this way. Uh, so what is V secondary? It is same as the output voltage VO. Okay? So then, um, but notice that the dotted end is negative. Okay? Uh, 
So therefore, under the same condition during the off interval, on the primary, the dotted end would be negative. So V primary is obviously going to be a negative value. Okay, um, And the magnitude is going to be, V secondary is VO. So it would be VO divided by N. That is the primary voltage. Uh, where n is the, the turns ratio, n is really the n2 number of secondary turns over primary turns n1. Okay. So let's complete the waveform of V primary, Vn during the on interval and negative Vo over n during the off interval. And uh, for valid steady state, we require these two areas to be this, to be equal and opposite or the average, V primary average to be zero. That is what is called as the whole second balance. Okay. So let's uh, write the expression for this average V primary over one complete switching period. So that is uh, written in this expression. So during the um, um, okay. so during the on interval, it is Vn. So that's the magnitude, and the duration is um, dTs, and uh, Ts is common to both the terms. So I'm not I'm, I'm not included that. So it's Vn times d minus during the um, um, off interval, the magnitude is uh, uh, VO over, uh, it's minus VO over N, so that's minus VO over N, and the duration is 1 minus DTS, and as I said, the TS is um, is cancelled. Okay? So the sum of these two is 0, that's the volt second balance, and uh, if we simplify this, you'll get the expression to be uh, the one that we want. It is. It says VO over VN is uh, N, the turns ratio N, times D over 1 minus D. So this is uh, similar to a buck boost, except that now we also have uh, another um, variable, uh, the turns ratio, so that also comes in the input-output relationship.